So let's continue working with actions for uh, for just a bit longer. Uh, somebody once asked me on uh, 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 Udemy why uh, why use SK actions? Why not do? You know, I think they were implying why not just do everything through the the update statement. And uh, you know, if we think about it again, we've got a lot of kind of powerful stuff going on over here uh, with very little lines of code. Now, of course, yes, in, in the update statement, I could have a lot of uh, different variables controlling, uh, you know, how much you, we're, we're moving the character on each frame, uh, when to stop, you know, Boolean statements that kind of trigger things on and off. Uh, but, you know, now that I've been working with SpriteKit for as many years as it's been around, uh, I've obviously just, I mean, I embrace these actions uh, right away. But, you um, but I, I do think that they're just absolutely uh, you know, critical to making a good game with Sprite Kit and also just kind of, uh, again, you can easily control things. And here's another example of that. So watch, um, we're gonna, uh, here, I'll put it kind of in the right order here. I'm gonna make another action called finish. Okay, so SK action, and this is gonna be SK action dot run. And you'll notice uh, that you've got um, this first little option that pops up over here. Uh, you can just put code um, down in this little area, right, to run, uh, in, in this case, after our other actions. So again, in our sequence, we're waiting, we do our group, and then we finish, right? So we can put over here, print, finish. So this could call something else. So maybe, um, you know, you could, if this was like a platformer or something like that, uh, when the character jumps up and then back down again uh, in, in this line of code, you could call a sound file, right? And there's actually even an action for that. I don't have any sounds imported in here, but, um, uh, you know, that would look like uh, let sound SK action. You don't even have to really write SK action right here. You can just put in your SK action dot uh, play a sound file named. And there you go, you put in the name of the sound file, you don't really need to, as this is not part of anything else, you don't have to wait for a completion on that, so you can put false. But um, but let's do this, let's have a little fun with this, and I actually haven't even tested it out, of course, make sure this this is running correctly, but uh, we'll see that in just a second, I'll explain what we'll do. Maybe what we should do is uh, add a little gravity uh, to this character only when he's walking, and so we can make it seem like uh, when the, um, when he walks, maybe he's affected by the wind, right? And that could actually still work in a top-down viewed game like this. So over here in our uh, did move the view statement, let's write self dot physics world dot gravity, and uh, you'll notice actually when I type this, or yeah, there it is. Uh, it's asking for a CG vector value in here, and a vector. I can think. Of, every time I hear that, I'll think of that uh, first Despicable Me movie. Uh, wasn't, wasn't his name Vector? Uh, is uh, so so it's looking for a, a vector value, and you just define these with uh, x and y values, or in this case, it's actually just a dx. Um, maybe directional x. I've never actually looked up what that d is is in the uh, in there, but. Uh, so currently the default is zero and negative 9.8. Okay, so that, that kind of gives you a baseline for this. So if we just wanted to apply like a little bit of wind to a, to the guy, what we'd probably want to do is just put one here and then just do nothing on the uh, on the y axis. Okay, so there's a little like you know eastern wind coming through here, and uh, again we'll, we'll leave uh, dynamic and all that set to false. So basically if this if he's set to dynamic right uh we're also making his affected by gravity is also effectively off as well right so but if you want to be explicit about that you can just put in there equals false all right uh so let's go ahead and just copy these lines of code and what we'll do is we'll paste them right down here and uh, when you do uh, put in these i'll leave that print statement in when you do put in these um the the blocks of code as part of these SK actions, it's gonna complain that you haven't um, put self in front of them, inserted itself just uh, to make capture semantics ex explicit. So if you want X, X code to get explicit on you, uh, put in self and then you don't have to do that outside of here. So we could just, actually I think I still have it in the clipboard, there it is. So then uh, when we uh, press down, we're gonna set dynamic to true, affected by gravity to true, and then once he's done walking, he can kind of brace himself again and he's not affected by the wind. So let's see how that works. Here we go. 
And hey, you know, we've now given us a <laughs> given us back a reason for him to actually have that physics body uh, on, right? All right, so I'm going to press down. And you can see he's kind of pulled off a little bit to the right as he walks downward. And each time we finish up and set his uh, body back to being dynamic again. And you know what? One little tricky thing I think we could do is uh, when we show the physics, watch this. I believe... The, the bounding outline around the character uh, changes from orange to green uh, when it goes back and forth from uh, being dynamic. All right, so, well, a blue, I guess, and then... All right, well, completely wrong about that. I thought uh, I thought they, they showed us a different color for um, shapes that are uh, have dynamic set to false. Well, anyway, now you get to see the... A little reminder of how to show yourself the physics again. Uh, all right, so let's get back over here to the game scene file. And uh, this, again, I, I, I can't understate how powerful ha having this option to run code in a sequence over here is. So just kind of take a mental note of all that. Or, hey, you know what? You don't even have to. You've got notes on your devices, right? Just copy and paste that in there. Uh, another little tricky thing you could... Um, play around with is uh, making the duration a variable over here. And you can do that for both uh, the walk, the, the animation that you, that you used from the actions file. You know, this actually has another property to it. We can put in here duration. Let's just set that to one for right now. But we can go over here to the top of the file and declare a speed variable. And again, as, as a this is a true variable, not just a, like a let that's not going to change over time. As a variable, you know, this could be something that uh, changes from level to level to make things harder or whatever. So uh, you can put in here time interval, and again, you can set your kind of uh, base time at whatever you want. Uh, that's, does it want, uh, oh, maybe it's NS time interval. Let me see. Nope, it wasn't NS either. It's a, I always forget this. Speed is actually something that's reserved. So uh, we'd have to put in here, um, you know, character speed or something like that, or uh, maybe maybe move movement move speed. Why am I changing this? Um, and yes, time interval is what uh, Swift three wants it as. If we put this to one, we're not going to really see any difference from what we already got. So let's go ahead and just put that down at point three, and then we'll come down here and replace our duration variables with our move speed. Uh, so again, those are going to be kind of synced up over there. Not sure what the, there it is. It went away on its own. A little <laughs> Xcode compiler takes a few extra moments to think. And, uh, but this time around now we should see that the, uh, the speed has increased. Hey, look at that fast little guy running along. And obviously now the, uh, the faster he goes, the less he's affected by the gravity because then it doesn't have as much time to kind of, um, you know, pull him uh, over to the side. So some things you can think about, right?